the Kabbalistic Manishtana. So Manishtana is maybe the most familiar part of the Haggadah because from a very early age we're made aware of it and it's where we ask the four questions. I've got them here in the order that they appear in majority of the Haggadot. There are some who have it slightly different but why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights we eat chametz, leaven or matzah. On this night we eat only matzah. On all other nights we eat any type of vegetables. On this night we eat mara, bitter herbs. On all other nights we are not required to dip even once. On this night we dip twice. And all other nights we eat either sitting or reclining. On this night we all recline. So these four questions are specific. It's th specifically these four questions, even though there are other things that happen on the night of the Seder, but we specifically ask about these four. And we teach our children to ask about these four. So why indeed? So of course there are many levels to this. But we're going to look at a mystical Kabbalistic uh, explanation based on the writings of Hasidism. Hasidism always tries to take uh, every part of, of Torah and make it personally relevant. And it's not just historical, but it's personal and spiritual. And so the entire story of Pesach from a Hasidic standpoint is actually a spiritual journey that we are all going on. That the word Pesach is translated as Passover. And we know it's called Passover because in the slaying of the firstborn, God passed over the Jewish houses. He jumped over, passed over. But if that's the name of the festival, Pesach is the name of the festival, passing over. So it must mean something much deeper than just something that happened once upon a time. What's the personal meaning of Passover? Pesach means to take a leap, to take a jump. The Jewish people took a leap then from being in a very deeply slave state into complete freedom in an instant. There was one day they were slaves and the next day they were free. One day they were, they were steeped in the Egyptian quagmire and the next day they were walking out following God into the desert. It was, it was a huge jump, a leap that they took. It wasn't a gradual process, the exodus from Egypt. It, was, it wasn't a, a, you know, a political upheaval where there was a change of heart and then they uh, went and spoke to the government and after a time things got easy. It, w it wasn't gradual, it was instantaneous and extreme. And so the Hasidic masters say the Pesach is a, a leap, is a time for all of us to take a leap, a jump, spiritually. That whatever state we're in currently, whatever level we are spiritually, wherever we're at in our lives, we can always go further and go higher. Generally speaking, growth should be gradual. It's good to go step by step. It's good to go, you know, take baby steps and little, little bits and pieces. That's generally speaking how we need to grow. However, sometimes we need to take a leap. We need to jump from where we were till, to, to our new self. We can't do it gradually because if you're only doing gradually, so then you're very limited in your growth. Sometimes you have to just say, okay, where I am was fine till now, but I need to go somewhere else. I need to go to a higher place. I need to take that leap into freedom. I need to take, think about something that I'm stuck in that I know I've, I need to get rid of it, and I need to jump out of it. If it's a bad habit, or if it's a, if it's a, a, a bad um, attitude that I have, or if it's just a, a, a negative pattern that I've developed, I need to take it, look at it, and say, I'm not going to deal with this step by step, I'm going to leap and take a jump out of it. And Pesach has the power to, to, to allow us to do that, to be free from whatever particular slavery that we are struggling with. And that's why it's an exodus from Egypt, because Egypt in Hebrew, Mitzrayim, the term Mitzrayim, actually means a narrowness, a limitation. The word Metzer, Mitzrayim, means something that is holding us down, it, it's narrowing us, it's, it's keeping us back. And so Pesach is a jump, where we're having an exodus from Egypt, which is our limitation, something that's holding us back, whether that be our habits that are holding us back, or our surroundings and bad influences that are holding us back, or our inner inhibitions and fears that are holding us back, that we're scared to change, that we're comfortable where we are, uh, we're used to it, uh, or we're scared what people are going to think if I, if I change and I do something, or we're scared what am I, what am I going to become, what's gonna, wh wh where am I going to go. There are all these, these various limitations. This is our personal Egypt. And the exodus is to go out. So. And this is what the Seder is. The Seder is an order. Well, Seder literally means order. 
But on a deep level, it's, an, it's a strategy, a seder, an order, an orderly way to jump. This is the instructions on how to take your jump. So when we, when we sit at the seder, we're saying, I'm, I'm now opening myself to an experience that is going to take me to a new place. Out, out of, my, uh, out of my, my limitations. So how do you do that? How do we actually really change? We, we know that uh, we, we often talk about changing and we often think about, I'm, you know, I'm really going to change. You know, we make either a New Year's re resolution or somebody points out to us something that we're doing that isn't right. So, yeah, I really need to change that. And so often we don't. What, what makes a person really change? So the mystics have identified four particular weaknesses that need to be addressed or attitudes that need to be adopted to really be free, spiritually free, and to change. The first one is surrender. Surrender means putting your ego aside and being open to change. As long as I am complacent, as long as I'm comfortable in myself and I, and I think I'm good as I am and I don't need to change, if I have a, a sense of arrogance, I'm stuck in my ego, I'm never, I'm never gonna change. Because any advice anyone gives me, well, they don't know what they're talking about. I know what I know better. And, and any criticism anyone says, I can't handle because that sh shatters my ego, so I, I can't be different. I need to be able to surrender to a higher vision I need to be able to, to, to put my ego aside and say, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm bad, but I can improve. I'm, 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 not, I'm not complete. If a, a, an egotistical person never changes, I need to be able to suspend my ego and to surrender to something higher. That's, that's number one. Number two is I have to have a sense of dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction means that I have to really not be happy with the current state and that will allow me to be open to change. As long as, long as, as, as I am self-satisfied, so then, you know, why should, why should I change? This is different to arrogance. This is, this is more just being, being comfortable. Um, even with our wrongdoing, sometimes we do something wrong and we know we're doing wrong, but we're able to justify it in our mind that it's actually okay. So I won't say I'm doing the wrong thing, or I won't say this is a bad habit, I, I come to like it. I enjoy my bad habit, and, I, and so therefore I justify it, and I, and I stick with it. I have to actually be dissatisfied. I have to be annoyed with myself. I have to be disappointed with myself. I can do better. I have to shake myself up in order to change. Thirdly, immersion. To immerse in something means to let go of skepticism, of inhibitions and fears to immerse your mind and heart in, 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 the, in the spiritual goal that you have. That one of the reasons why we don't change is because we're not fully immersed in our, in our, uh, in our goals. We have one foot here, one foot there. So we're, we're, not, we're not completely dedicated. We have to immerse ourselves in an experience, full, full immersion, completely giving yourself over to it, and then you have a chance of changing. Um, and finally, confidence. The fourth thing is confidence. You have to believe that you can do this, that you have an inner strength and a power and the gift to do this. You can improve, you can get better. Uh, if you don't believe you can do it, so then you're right. <laughs> you, know, the, you, you can't. If you do believe, then, you, then you're also right. You, you, can, you can do it. If you have a sense of confidence, then you are really able to change. It's often a lack of confidence that stops us from making big decisions and, and, and making big steps. So surrender, dissatisfaction, emotion, and confidence. These are the four prerequisites for spiritual freedom. And these four things are represented by four elements of the Seder. The first one is the, the, the ego versus surrender is matzah and chametz. Chometz, the concept of chometz of leaven is something that is puffed up, that is self-inflated, which represents ego. Matzah is flat, tasteless, it, it, it has no body of itself. It's not about itself. And so matzah represents the, 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 the bread of egolessness, 
of surrender. Even the simple reason why we eat matzah is because the Jewish people rushed out of Egypt so quickly there's no time for the bread to rise. That rush was that God said we're going, so they went. Which is an amazing suspension of ego. After being a couple hundred years in a country, even if you're suffering there, but that's what you're comfortable with, to just get up and leave because God says to go into the desert, that is egoless. That is saying, I'm following God, not, not, I'm not going by my instincts, I'm going by the divine instinct and, and following Him. Matzah is the bread of egolessness. And so the first question we ask, we say, why is this night different from all other nights? Why are we going to be any different tonight? Why am I going to change when I haven't changed before? Why am I going to take a jump out of my Egypt, out of my inhibitions and my limitations tonight? Why is it going to work tonight? Why is it different to any other night? I've, I've many times wanted to change. It doesn't work. So why should tonight work? Well, tonight is different because all other nights we may have chametz, but tonight we have matzah. That, and the rest of the time you're stuck in your ego and your ego doesn't let you change. But tonight we eat matzah, we, we taste egolessness. We say we're going to follow this path. We're going to trust a higher, a higher power that is not me, something outside of me. I'm going to eat matzah tonight, not chametz. So therefore I'm going to be different. That's number one. Number two, on all other nights we eat any vegetables, but tonight we eat bitter herbs. The bitter herbs, maror, means that sense of dissatisfaction. That the, the, the bitterness, to, to feel my bitterness means to say, I'm not happy where I am. I am not happy with, what, I, with what, I, what I've achieved. I'm not beating myself up, but I'm saying that I can do better. I'm not satisfied with where I am. And so I have to taste, I have to say, yes, there are some habits that I have that are not good. And I have to feel that bitterness. I have to feel a sense of disappointment because I can do better. I have to actually eat the bitter herb. I have to taste that bitterness. I have to feel that this is not where I'm supposed to be. I have to break my complacency. That's the eating of the bitter herbs. Then on all other nights, we're not required to dip even once. In this type of night, we dip twice. That, that tonight, I'm going to immerse myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to, put, to put myself into the experience fully. Twice, on, on a, for my mind and my heart, I'm going to be completely present in, the, in this moment. It's one of the challenges of the Seder is to be really present in it. To not be too worried about the time and how, how late it is. Not too worried about where I'm supposed to be. Just be in, in, in it and experience every moment of it with your mind and with your heart, to dip twice. When you immerse yourself in the experience, then you can really change. And on all other nights, we eat either sitting or reclining. On this night, we all recline. What's the idea of the reclining uh, at, the, at the Seder? So reclining was a, a royal way of eating. Like you see those pictures of those, the Roman emperors with the, the grapes usually, um, le leaning on a, on a couch. That was a royal way to eat. Uh, a person who was a commoner couldn't afford to eat that way. You had to eat it in a, in a rush. But somebody who's sitting back, relaxed and, and eating, that's, that's royalty. And that represents confidence. That, that I'm confident in the royalty of my soul. I, I have powers. I, I'm royal. I'm a king and queen. I, I, ha I have these powers. I have energy. I have, I have abilities. I have gifts that I can utilize. And so on other nights we might sit or we might recline. Maybe we're confident, maybe we're not confident. But tonight we're all reclined. We all sense our inner royalty, that we have this power and that, we, and that we can do it. So if I can have the surrender of my ego, which is the matzah, if I can feel dissatisfied, which is the maror, if I can experience an immersion in the moment, which is the dipping, and if I can be confident and, and sense my inner royalty, which is the reclining, so then tonight will be different from all other nights. I'll actually be able to transform myself, to move to a higher level. And isn't it fascinating that, that these four are the four questions that the children ask? Yes. And, and in, in fact, it has the answers. The question in it has the answer. Why is this night different? Well, there's four reasons why. And perhaps it's because if you look at children, they're very good at these four things. In fact, sometimes better than adults. That ki kids are uh, quite good. Little kids are good at, at being egoless. They don't, they don't think they know everything. They're, they're open to learn. They're open to hear something new. They're not stuck in, in, the, in the old ways because they don't have old ways. They're, they're, they're open. Also, they can feel dissatisfaction. They cry when, when they need to cry. They can be upset when they, when they be upset. They, they, they can feel emotions deeply. Uh, they're immersed in the moment. Whatever a child is doing, they're completely in it and nothing else exists. Unlike sometimes we are all over the place and never in one place, never where we really are. A child is totally focused on doing 
and also a kid has confidence.